Brown. Uh, before that, Eli hasn't thrown a touchdown in like two straight games. Uh, it's been a while but, for him. But I remember those two interceptions, Eli. Ooh, yeah. Those mm. two interceptions. But we we talk we do the same thing every year. Every mm-hmm. year the Giants start off six and two. Every year they slump in November. It's actually, frankly, like an actual thing. Like it's <laughs> I think it's, it's like a Giants ritual yeah, that we go through and yeah. then we bounce right back. Yeah. Well, I don't know if we'll bounce. Right. We hope we bounce right back. I mm-hmm. mean, when it happened last year, everything was fine. But we literally came down to the wire as far as whether or not we were even going to make it into the playoffs. But of course, if you get hot at the right time, good things happen. Don't you think hot is right now? Well, uh, frankly, hot is when you're not losing. With um, with six more weeks left, five but, technically, but, we're starting week but the question tonight. is, where's the momentum? What's the momentum? And like you said, the Giants are going into this bye week. If they were going into this bye week with a win, then maybe you'd be more excited. Like, okay, listen, as long as we've, you know, we've been trying, we have a little break, but we're coming back positive. Now we're looking at this. We have two weeks to sulk and talk about how bad the Giants looked, how awful our offense was. <laughs> You know, I heard that in the background. wasn't going to say anything. What is that? I don't know. It's, it's on your playlist. No, 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 no. I didn't put that there. This, this is actually perfect music. This sounds like funeral music, actually. Jeez. So we're going to play this. Eli, Five Giants. Eli, Go ahead. So no, <laughs> sorry. No, that's all right. Eli Manning, uh, 46 passes. Completely. Way too many. Completed 29 of his 46 passes. 215 yards. No touchdowns. And two interceptions. He hasn't been. He, I don't think he got. He hasn't been sacked as much. And I know, even considering uh, Cincinnati, mm-hmm. they're not necessarily known for sacking the quarterback. Eli was sacked four times yesterday, and that f- front line that we call our defense wasn't able to get to Andy Dalton once. Mind you, Andy Dalton completed twenty-one of thirty passes, one hundred ninety-nine yards, four touchdowns, and zero interceptions. Oh my gosh, that hurts. That just made my stomach like. Yeah, and now with Eli, it's like, what's going on with him? He can't make a play. He can't even throw. Like he can't even throw the ball away. He's gone three straight games without throwing a touchdown pass, and the only other time that happened was 2004 when he was a rookie. When he was a rookie. Mm-hmm. So everyone's thinking, oh, was Eli regressing? But no, this is again what happens. I mean, we, we've seen Eli come back and have those fourth quarter comebacks and really resurrect the team and and lead us to victory. Mm -hmm. But we've also seen him have, I mean, in this game, he only had two interceptions. I've seen Eli throw four interception games. Mm -hmm. Four interceptions in one game is ridiculous. I mean, this clearly wasn't as bad. But for the Giants to only have a field goal in the first and a field goal in the second quarter, those don't even count. And like I said, that final touchdown, frankly, the final score should be 31-6, to so everyone can see how embarrassing that (laughs) loss is. Andre Brown was able to get that two-yard run to make it, a respectable, and it's not even thirty-one to thirteen. And I think the la- the loss last week was more forgivable because coming out of like Sandy and everything else that was going on with New York, people could have been distracted. Right. And- I mean, even if we got a, a win, that would have. Tom Coughlin was saying he was hoping for a win last week that would lift the people's spirits. Yeah. You know, but yeah. this week, this week it's 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 nothing but questions. And then we're Losing going to into the bye to the Bengals. That's kind of. Yeah, there's no time off for the bye week for the Giants, put it like that. And I think like what you just said, Annie, too, like look at what happened when they lost last week. It's not even, okay, we, we want to win for the New York people. Well, at least they won, also, lost to a good team exactly. like the Pittsburgh Steelers. Was, we could understand that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It was the Pittsburgh Steelers, so we're fine with that. But then when we come back after the bye, this is right around, um, is this before or after um, Thanksgiving? I'm not sure. How dates work, um, but then the next couple of games next week is yeah Thanksgiving. Um, we have Green Bay Packers when they come back on Sunday, the, November the twenty fifth. Then there's the Washington Redskins team. Uh, nobody really knows. And there's New Orleans who is hot now. Atlanta mm-hmm. who just got their first loss of this season. To New Orleans. Um, and then Baltimore and then Philadelphia. And who knows how Philly's going to be looking in December, Ooh. December 30th. Especially I, with the change that's going on right now. And, and who knows what the change is. Maybe by then, if Mike Vick sits out, sits out a couple of oh. weeks, he might be back by then. We haven't even gotten there. So who, <laughs> who, who knows what's going to happen? Possibly but, new coach? But of course, nah. nah, oh. I don't think they'll fire him mid-season. Probably I, I think next they, season. I, no, I think they wait till the end of this season because, you know, his son just died. I think it's yeah. bad form to do that. But I don't think they should be using the fact that there was a death in the family to keep a guy like Andy Reid on, even though he's been there, what, 14 years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, yeah, the Giants looked abysmal yesterday. Um, very disappointed in and the entire team. Mm-hmm, and we're now 6-4. and four. We still have a lead over Dallas in the NFC East, who was down one to the game in the loss column, mm. as I was looking at it earlier. And 
the, well, the Cowboys, they have three straight home games coming up against the Browns, Redskins, Eagles, and the Giants. Like you said, we have a bye. Then we have games against the Redskins. Away. Oh, no, Packers at home, and then Redskins on the ro- road. So the Cowboys beat the Browns, the Redskins, and the Giants lose to the Packers. I guess there'll be a first-place tie in the NFC East. We'll see I how that goes. I do not want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and then the, We then always want to be number one. Especially no, not when even that. Then that all, all well, that especially does against is, the Cowboys. All that does is yeah. take you back to last year when it's literally week 17, and if you lose or win this game, it either you're going on to the playoffs or you're mm-hmm. not. I don't have the heart strength for that. I'm already <laughs> overweight. I don't run. I don't move fast. I'm sweating here in the studio. I can't take all this, oh all these palpitations. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. This Did is you, how I feel. I can't. I can't breathe. WHCR ninety point three right FM, New York. And by the way, now that you're in the sports that. and half, if you want to call in, call in, talk to us two one two six five zero six nine zero three two one two six five zero six nine zero three. Oh, that but, would be fun. A man in la- last night, he completed 29 of his 49 passes for 215 yards, no touchdowns, two interceptions that hurt my soul last night. And he now has 12 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, and has not thrown a touchdown since the 70-70 yarder to Victor Cruz, which was against the Redskins on October 21st. And I'll give a shout out to the Cincinnati Bengals because even that's a team that everyone was looking at. Like, oh, there should be a. It's one of those. It's not necessarily. I don't want to call it a trap game per se, but it was one of those games. You're in a trap. Three and five. (laughs) A three and five team is coming in, or you're going to a three and five team. Uh, They're not necessarily playing so well. They haven't been in every single game. You kind of don't expect too much from them. And the Giants should win this game. Uh, The Giants were barely able to run the ball. Uh, Maybe that's an overstatement. Um, I think Andre Brown, I feel like they always only use him like on kickoffs. Crunch time. And then at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. But I feel like him and Bradshaw could be like that tandem. Remember when we had Earth, Wind, and Fire? <laughs> mm-hmm. And then I think Fire left or Wind left. I'm not sure which one of them left. And then we had that two-headed uh, running game. And, and now I feel like we're leaving a lot of it up to Bradshaw. I know Brown fumbled early. But I think he has the potential to actually break out. He has great speed. Um, I, I wasn't ha- ex- exactly happy with the Giants rushing game. I think they were able to limit uh, Victor Cruz yesterday as well, uh, mm-hmm. and and the drops that he had too. Consider those. I mean, every there's just some things that are happening with this Giants team right now that are kind of unforgivable. It's unforget. Well, I, I'll forgive it only because I'm a Giants fan, but it's I I, mm-hmm. I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it feels. It feels like last year's November. And Which is not a bad before, thing, though. No, because it is. Last year we ended up pulling it off. Yeah, with but the Super Bowl title. But that is like a one in a, one in a million. million. I don't like that because, and the year before, what you don't make it to the playoffs, even though you have a better record. I mean, you can't. They won the Super Bowl last year as with a nine and seven record. They're already six and four. That's not. That's not really giving us too it's much. It's not pretty. Re- it's not pretty. It's not pretty at all. And it doesn't have to be a beautiful win. I just want it to be something consistent. But like I've said for the past couple of years, the Giants are the model of inconsistency. They'll win a couple of games. They'll get your hopes up. They'll go on a four-game losing streak. Win one, lose one. Win two, lose one. And then next thing you know, you're in the playoffs and you're beating teams. Even coming down to the wire as well. Don't forget that San Francisco game. Um, but they end up with the win. I, I love this team still. I don't think they're going to lose. I don't think they're going to end the season with a losing record. But I would prefer it if we could take better care of the ball. I want a little bit more from that defense. For the fact that uh, nobody was able to get to Looking Andy confused. Dalton. No one was able to sack Andy Dalton. It happens. And Eli was sacked four times. I don't like seeing his jersey dirty. I'm sorry. Oh, he must be elite and clean, right? Yeah, please. Okay. Pristine, if we can. Okay. Um, but from one losing New York team to another, let's just take a gander at what the J- oh. Jets were able to <laughs> not accomplish yesterday. Um, well, <laughs> at least Sexy Rexy now is saying we have a 0.2%. Per- what is it? A 2 point? What? What? I don't know. He's saying we have a 2% chance of <laughs> making it to the playoffs now. He said that? Yeah. He actually said that. I will get the direct quote for you in a second. Okay, so uh, but, okay. while oh. you're finding that, let's talk about <laughs> the fact that the New York J- Jets went into Seattle, which has a, allegedly or apparently mm-hmm. one of the best stadiums, home stadiums. I found it. Um, the crowd is loud. Um, they're literally the 12th Energetic. man. You know, they say there are 11 men on the field, but there's that 12th man. 
in Seattle, it's actually true. The crowd is ridiculously loud. They know when to be loud. Unlike some crowds, you just go to the game and scream when you're telling them to be quiet because mm-hmm. you're on offense and you need to run a serious play. Um, the Jets ended up losing yesterday. Why are you laughing, Chi Chi? This is not funny. This is not a laughing matter. This is okay? hilarious. Twenty-eight to seven to Ooh. the Seattle Seahawks. Um, the Jets are now three and six. And le- and Rex Ryan, he says, I don't know how many more losses you can spot somebody before you think you can make the playoffs. It's a two percent chance of making the playoffs with the record we have now, but we're going to take a shot. There's no quit in these games, in these guys. You know, I, okay. Everyone knows I like. You sexy know, Rexy. You know I love Sexy Rexy. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Rex Ryan. I Well, okay, this is a different Rex Ryan. This Rex Ryan that we're seeing this is more season, calm, a little more humble. Lean. He's a little more calm. He's a bit more humble, but he's also not himself because this is not the Rex Ryan that we knew from Baltimore. A little this skinnier, is, too. He, he has lost quite a bit of weight. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, when he was in Baltimore, that's who he was. When he first started here, his first two, three, two seasons, I would say, that's who he was. Last year, I think he tried to take it down a notch. And this now year, he's down. This year, he just sounds like a drone in, in press conferences. Well, we're going to try. I'm really excited for the things that we have coming up. <laughs> I'm going to look at the tape. I'm going to see some positive things. It's like, what? Hey, he's being positive, Chi-Chi. Yeah, but he sounds like he's reading from a script. Nobody believes you because you, he's the only we one who sees these things. You. you need more people. You need a lot more people. Right? You need a lot more points. And you need a lot more wins, Rex. You're so do you think that six. um, you can, is it, is it clear to say that the giant season is over? I mean, the Jets, sorry. Ooh, the Giants on my mind. Um, well, the, I mean, your season's never over because, frankly, making it to the playoffs is, for some people, okay, I think for some teams, making it to the playoffs is not an accomplishment. You're supposed to make it to the playoffs. Of course. I think for other teams, you're supposed to make it deep into the playoffs. I think for other teams, you're supposed to make it to the Super Bowl. The other ones, the few that are left, you have to win to make the it. Super Bowl. But I think for certain teams, depending on your personnel and your staff and who you have on your team, then making it to the playoffs is actually an accomplishment. At mm-hmm. three and six, I don't know what the Jets' chances are. Maybe that 2% is correct. But if it's not, if your season is technically over and you can't make it to the playoffs, my thing is, then are we not playing spoiler? Because then that would be an accomplishment. I'm trying to beat every other team that we play and knock you out and knock you out. Knock and me knock out? You. Every, well, no, well, not you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I think at, the, at this point, we have to really realize what Mark Sanchez has around him. Especially and celebrating his 26th birthday yesterday. <laughs> yesterday was his birthday? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cute, but you lost, so nobody cares. Ooh, um, he didn't forget that one, though, with sorry. his two turnovers, the seventh time this season that he's had in that two in the game. That interception, that fumble late, that the, late that fumble? That offense was a shutout. Oh, my goodness. What was going on? And <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm just surprised. Antonio Camardi says... Because, you know, they've been talking oh, for the longest. Since Tebow came into the picture, they've always been talking about, oh, will we switch Tebow for Sanchez and all this stuff. You know what um, Cromarty says? They can kiss my... Who's Mark, they? Mark is our quarterback, and he's our only quarterback. <sighs> <laughs> that's how he feels. I'm nah. just telling you how he feels. No, that's great. Listen, I don't have any problem with the players on the team... But, but the yeah, I don't offense. Have, yeah, I don't have the play. I, I don't have any issues with the players on the team. It's just the offense as a taking whole. A, you know, taking a, oh, taking up for Mark Sanchez because mm-hmm. frankly, look what the Jets did to him. Um, last year he okay. The first two years when he came in, yeah, first two <laughs> years when he came in, uh, you know, they waited to the AFC Championship game. Everyone was really excited because he was playing well. But nobody, I feel like nobody remembers. Does anyone remember that Mark Sanchez was really a game manager? Frankly, what they relied on was their run game and their defense, and they just hoped and prayed that Mark Sanchez wouldn't turn the ball over the first two years of his career. And also, if you remember, his head coach at USC was, um, oh, come on, my brain just went blank. Um, the head coach for the um, Seattle Seahawks now. Oh, come on. Oh, what's his name? Pete Carroll. There we go. Um, his head coach was Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll said, I don't think Mark Sanchez is ready to go, go into the NFL. Everyone was like, oh, Pete Carroll's just being salty. He wants to keep his quarterback. No, maybe Pete Carroll was right. He's, you can always see something in your plays. You know them, technically. Yeah. You kind of got guys that are like family. Yeah, maybe he maybe he knew more than we I mean, Clearly, he knew more than we did. Mm-hmm. And Mark Sanchez, like I said, the first two years they made it to those AFC championship games, it's not like he was lighting up the scoreboard and setting all kinds of records. 
Mark Sanchez was really just a game manager. Mark, don't turn over the ball. We l we'll let the running game handle it, and we'll let the defense handle it. And that's really a reflection of Eric Mangini. Remember, we used to call him Mangenius until he started losing. Mm -hmm. But it was really a reflection of the team that he put together that Rex Ryan and Mark Sanchez inherited together. So now you have Mark Sanchez in his third year where the team is sort of, the running game has dwindled. They're no longer ground and pound. The defense has gotten older. Players have retired. People have moved on. And now you're putting all of this on Mark Sanchez's shoulders. And I'm not saying he's a victim in this. But so you need the offense, the, the players around him to help him out. Yeah. Which is basically if saying. everyone around him that helped him his first two years is now gone. Imagine. OK, so we come to WHDR. We mm -hmm. walk in the door because there's security there. There's a thing here. How, if, if they take away our key, pa our key pass, how are we going to get in the door? Are we supposed to break the glass? I don't think we're supposed to do that. You're going to jail now. Yeah, right. <laughs> Either you're going to jail or you can't do the show. I mean, those are your options. And at this point, I feel like Mark Sanchez doesn't have the key pieces, literally key pieces around him to help him do his job. And I feel bad for him. And then everyone was saying last year, oh, well, Mark Sanchez isn't motivated enough. You have an old guy behind him. You need someone to come in and push him, push him, make him play better. Then they brought in Tim Tebow and they refused to put Tim Tebow in the game. And when they do, it's dink and dunk stuff. It's the same short yardage. And we're not Nobody's even seeing Tebow come be his best they're not exactly. giving him a chance to be his best because he had 10 offensive snaps came in on third and goal from the one yard line it just wasn't pretty at, with a false start after that when he came in the third one with a false start and that's what right after that was when mark sanchez i think it was third and i think it was third and goal after that but from the sixth and then um and then tebow was out the game yeah tebow was out of the game and that's when mark sanchez sanchez um threw that interception I mean, I don't think they're putting Mark Sanchez in a position his, to that's succeed. That's his fourth in the red zone for the season. Come on. <laughs> Come on, dude. They're not putting Mark Sanchez in a position to succeed. And it seems like they're not doing it for Tebow either. Because my thing is, I heard Rex Ryan say, well, um, I know Mark Sanchez is good. Tebow's also a great foot. You know, everyone calls Tebow a good football player. They won't call him a quarterback. He's a good football player. Um, now they're not calling him a quarterback. Because no. Because last year he was, he no, was no. God's quarterback. Well, no, last year he still wasn't a quarterback. He was a good athlete who happened to throw the ball on occasion. And I run. mean, that's all oh, right. Throw, exactly. Run, exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. And now they're, you know, now they've sort of built this mysticism around him, even if you remember in the beginning of the season, preseason. He refused, has like that glow around him, like, Ooh. like a halo, literally. They refused yeah. to, um, they refused to show us what the um, Wildcat package was. And still, even to this date, we haven't seen a Wildcat. WCR 90.3 FM. Hey, this is MK Rob. MK Rob in the house. What's good? What's good? What's going on? I hear you talking about the Jets and Mr. Sanchez. Oh, jeez. Oh. Can you believe this? Rex, What's your take on this? You know what? Rex Ryan is, uh, you know, it's, it's the Jets organization. They're screwed up all together. I mean, this is no surprise. It, they're not, I, I think you said it earlier, Chi Chi, they're not really putting him in a good situation really to uh, succeed. Um, I, I, I just don't see why they just don't play Tim Tebow anyway um, and just start him because it seems like he's being forced. Woody Johnson is forcing him yeah. to mm -hmm. play Tim Tebow. Yeah. And I don't know why he just doesn't start Tim Tebow to begin with. Just let him have it. You know, and see what he does. Give him a chance. This interchangeable definitely. thing because it doesn't mm -hmm. work in the NFL. Like this interchangeable quarterback deal. It's not the Redskins. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Well, I'll say this even for the interchangeable thing. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. Uh, I, I frankly, I wouldn't mind. Look at the Jets well, we, season right we've now. We've seen that done six. with the Redskins last year. I wouldn't mind Tim Tebow coming in for, um, like a stretch. You know, like an entire possession. For the rest of the season? No, 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 no. Okay. In a game, even if they start Mark Sanchez and bring in Tebow for a possession. Like the second oh, like half whole, or something. What am I like a se no, I'm sorry, not a possession, a series. Mm -hmm. If they bring Tim Tebow in for a series, I wouldn't even mind watching and seeing what happens. Maybe they don't necessarily want to throw Mark Sanchez out the back door, but at Rex Ryan said, I think uh, Mark Sanchez gives us the best chance to win. But you're three and six and you keep losing, so he can't possibly be Tim Tebow can't be any worse. Like, what exactly are you risking and losing? And I like you said, or what are they scared of? I think winning. I think Tim Tebow was kind of forced on the team, forced on Rex Ryan. Mm -hmm. I think they saw all the money that Denver made with all the jerseys and all the tickets that they sold, and they thought, oh, let's just bring in Tim Tebow. I don't think they had any idea that Mark Sanchez would be this abysmal, will play this bad. Mm -hmm. And 
literally have Tim Tebow as an option. And I think what Rex Ryan is saying, I think he actually believes it. Mark Sanchez is our quarterback. He's our quarterback. I want to stand behind him. The rest of the team does too, as we see. Allegedly, well, uh, until they start winning. Well, the problem is, is that if you're going to bring Tebow in like that, and you want the tur- you know, the, the jersey sales, and you want this the same publicity and the same thing that Denver had, then you have to start him just like Denver, Denver. did. Yeah. You can't put him on the bench and expect to have all these, you know, sales and everything that you expect that you had in Denver. You have to start him. I'm yeah. sorry, you're three and six. You yeah. can't really. You can actually do worse with Mark Sanchez. But you didn't have nothing to lose by starting Tim Tebow. Yeah. WHCR, 90.3 FM, New York. Let's give the crap And to, to what you said, uh, Chi-Chi, in, in football, you know, you're, you're, you have a chemistry with certain players. And you have to have, you build a chemistry with your receivers and your running backs and, you know, Dustin Keller. And if you do throw in a Tim Tebow every series, it might throw Mark Sanchez off. He's already off. Rhythm. But, yeah, that's true. That's true, and that's why I think they should start yeah. him, Tebow, yeah. and just let him have it. Forget Sanchez. You bench him. Maybe he learns that, you know, you can't play mediocre or, or whatever, and let's see if Tim Tebow But when is he going to learn? Hmm? When is he going to learn? I mean, when is Sanchez mm-hmm. going to actually learn? When is he going to really we said go this, out there and we play? That, when is he not going to make so many mistakes? We said the same thing about Eli Manning his first couple of years in the se- in the in, a, in the NFL. I feel like it, it's not necessarily a time period, but I don't see Mark Sanchez making the necessary strides. I feel like he's been sort of undermined in this case. And for a guy who's like from, you know, from California, sort of with that, everyone pegs him as like the pretty boy, laid back attitude. Oh, Lord. This might not be the best place for him to be. Mm. That, that, that's very possible. I just, I'm just kind of speaking from experience with this. And the, what you learn is you don't necessarily learn anything football-wise from a Tim Tebow you know, replacement. I just know that when I was, you know, when I played ball, I was in high school, uh, you know, I wasn't playing well. And my coach started a guy, a freshman that I had, I <gasps> could not stand. Aww. I couldn't stand him. And he bitched me for him. And he, was do- he wasn't he was doing any better than I did. But when I got back in the game, guess what? I did not want him back on this field again. Yeah. And I had, you know, my, that was, I was halfway into the season. Five games in, I had the best five games I played on varsity <laughs> in my life. So it teaches you to, yeah. I don't want this guy back in anymore. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to prove that I'm, I belong on this field. Yeah. Same thing with Sanchez. If I want to prove that Tim Tebow doesn't belong, you know, as the quarterback of the Jets, I'm going to play my butt off. Thank you. And prove <laughs> that I belong as the starter and not Tim Tebow. Yeah, and my thing is, too, even if you look at the way that Mark Sanchez has been playing, fine, Tim Tebow's your second-string quarterback, but what about Greg McElroy? I mean, he's just literally laid up. They don't even they don't even dress him. He's just <laughs> chilling in the back, collecting a paycheck. I mean, I'm not saying necessarily he'd be a better alternative. Looking pretty, not getting any scratches or anything. Right, mm-hmm. but, if, I mean, if this is the way it's going and Mark Sanchez can't get it together, and it's not like he's playing well but the team is still losing. We've seen teams like that. It's that Mark Sanchez is still making critical elementary mistakes really elementary mm-hmm. really mistakes even though he's had a couple of years in the league already everyone just wants to see him take that next step and i think um Bree has to be wanting to take it more than everybody else wants to see him take it actually yeah. right and then, and what happens and i'm going back to where you said with eli and i look at a lot of different situations with aaron Rodgers, mm-hmm. and you know with eli and, and a few guys like that Aaron Rodgers learned behind a Brett Favre. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Eli Manning saw Kurt Warner yep. when he was when he got there. You know who has Mark Sanchez learned behind? Nobody. Nobody. Who does Tim Tebow learn behind? Nobody. Yeah. So you got you know the blind leading the blind with these two guys. Well, and that. In. Yeah, not mm-hmm. not only that, though, but that's, I think, sort of what we've seen, the change in the NFL over the past maybe sort of decade or so. Not Maybe not a decade, not a whole decade. That's a long time. <laughs> um, but we've seen where, you know, usually you bring in a guy, or a quarterback especially, and you have them learn behind somebody who's established and actually, mm-hmm. you know, been in the league for a while. These days we're throwing in rookies and expecting them to perform like, like Andrew, Andrew Luck, Luck and RG3 <laughs> and Cam Newton. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's just the way it is now. If you're a first-round draft pick, especially a high first-round draft pick at quarterback, Quarterback at the quarterback position, you usually are playing immediately. They're not drafting you so you can yeah. learn. They're drafting you to solve their problems ASAP, and it's not fair and, sometimes. Mm-hmm. Some people need more and, help. And that's and that's true. And I'm and you named the, the you named R, you know RG three and Andrew Luck and Cam Newton and all these guys. I'm gonna tell you where, where their advantage is. 
they actually have the same offense that they ran in college. In college. college. Yep. Eli and, yep. and Tim Tebow. You know, Tim Tebow yep. ran that crazy offense at Florida. He didn't. Yeah. He, you know, he was always in the shotgun. You know, he had to learn, you know, under center in yeah. Denver. And until they put him in the shotgun, and that's how they, you know, got on their little run. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you're it, it blessed to be in a situation where they'd actually change their offense to, to fit, fit you. what you do, then you're good. But if, if not, you're going to end up like Alex Smith. Ooh. Or Ben Young, yeah. or one of these other guys, you know, that was dra- drafted first overall, and you got to learn an offense. And Jason Campbell wasn't number one overall, but Jason Campbell's another one that had like four or five different, different co- offensive coordinators in Washington, and you can't expect. I mean, he even did well to me, considering so, so you considering the situation. Yeah. So if you're blessed, like an Andrew Luck and all that stuff, I mean, that's why. He looks so great now because he has the same exact offense. Hell, one of his tight ends came from Stanford with him, Kobe <laughs> Slinger, that played for the Colts. So they put him in so a mean, comfortable yeah. situation there. Yeah, he feels really, really comfortable. Mm-hmm. So. It's a good situation for those guys. Yeah. And shout out to you mentioned Alex Smith and I think you know for the With first the couple of years yeah uh mm-hmm. yeah for the first couple of years of his career everyone labeled him a bust but like you said mm-hmm. it's hard when you don't have the same offensive coordinator from year to year and you're literally you know learning a new offense every every season. Uh but he got knocked out of yesterday's game. There were a lot of we had a couple of concussions yesterday. We had Michael Vick knocked out. Ooh. We had um on purpose, I feel. I'm joking. Oh, I was about to, <laughs> I was about to say. Um, Alex Smith, and who was the third one? I think uh, Macklin got, I think, knocked out for a little Macklin while. Macklin, too? Session two, Jeremy Macklin, if I'm not mistaken. There's a, oh, and Jay Cutler. Cutler, that's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so we, you know, we've, I mean, of course, and I'm glad, of course, everyone's happy now that they're monitoring concussions more closely. Um, but then you see other guys step up. And even if you looked at yesterday's game, which, since you, you know, brought up um, Alex Smith, let's talk about that 49ers team a little bit. They actually, have you guys, I don't know what the last time I saw a, t- OT. a, a tie. This it was, was 13 a, 13 back in, when was it, 1990 or something like this that? This was the weirdest ending to a game I think I've ever seen. The 40, oh, the Rams went to um, San Francisco to play the 49ers. The game ended in a tie. So the Rams are now 3 5 and 1, and the 49ers are now 6 2 and 1. It went into overtime, turnovers, um, penalties. Next thing you know, the clock has run down and everyone's shaking hands and the score is still tied. It was actually a tie game last night. And I didn't get to tweet about it. I was literally, I was in my basement watching it. Um, and I'm screaming at the TV like, wait, what's happening? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, but um, it, it missed field goals. I mean, it was just a uh, crazy game. It was just, it, it was, it was weird. It was weird. It was weird. Very strange. Um. But I'm actually uh, even considering this 49ers team. They're still six two and one. Maybe you can uh, let me know. How does this actually this uh, tie game? How does that affect um, their standing come playoff time? Um, basically, if they end up with the same record, let's just say the Rams and and um, you know it, it actually can help you too. Um, if you if you are tied with the Rams and you're you know you both have the same record, whoever scores the most points. Um, throughout the season would get the nod for the playoff hmm. bid. So, you know, whoever scores them, you know, even if there's a team that ends up being 6-3 and three and they're 6-2-1, and one, you know, I'm just using that as an example, they get the nod because okay. they only lost two games. So that tie is really, you know, I, I told but, Annie yesterday, a tie is like kissing your sister. Oh. Um, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, this is a family show. This is a family show. <laughs> We don't. Oh wait. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> but it, it, that's how it works. It goes down to your points from that. You know, from that point. So if it does come down to some kind of a tie or or whatever, whoever scores the most points within the division by that time, they'll get the nod for the playoff spot. Okay. So it's the it's the first tie in the NFL since November 16, two thousand eight, which was the Eagles at Bengals thirteen thirteen. And that's when Donovan McNabb did not know the rules for playoffs. Yeah. Oh, that was that. hilarious, by the soup. way. Yep, yep. <laughs> that's the last time I remember, and he was like, I didn't know the yep. rules. People are still exactly. admitting to – I heard a couple of guys um, yesterday saying, I didn't know we weren't – people are still expecting double overtime or some other, some extra minutes on the clock. No. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> oh, you should listen to the sound bites of so many guys saying, oh, no, I didn't know the rules. It's like, even if you didn't know the rules, don't tell don't, anybody. Don't, don't admit that. Don't tell anybody you didn't mm-hmm. know how it was going to go down. 
Just pretend you played right. your hardest because, you, you know, I mean, even I if you did I played my hardest. I tried my hardest, yeah. but it just didn't work. What I wanted to say, too, we're talking mm-hmm. about um, number one quarterbacks, sort of, well, not number one quarterbacks, but um, starting quarterbacks getting knocked out and sort of seeing who's behind them and who's going to play next. Um, we talked about um, Alex Smith getting knocked out of the game with a concussion. Colin Kaepernick came in. And actually, I mean, he's been surprised. He's come in a couple of times during this season. We've seen a couple of glimpses of him. But he actually had to play uh, for a significant amount of time. And I thought he looked, uh, you know, of course, when he – didn't he fumble at the end or throw an interception? Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, I think he fumbled. He fumbled. Um, So, uh, you know, watching him play, I feel like he has great legs. He he has a great arm, of course. We've seen that as well. But you have to always – Yeah, but you always have to be ready. You know, you never know what's going to happen. He hasn't been in the league long. I mean, come on, please. But if someone, if your number is called, you have to be ready to step up. We saw that in San Francisco when um, yesterday when Alex Smith got knocked out. We also saw the same thing in Philly when I hoped both. Uh, Nick Foles? Yeah. N- Philly played Washington yesterday, mm-hmm. and I was hoping that both teams would lose. But that did not happen. <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't know how I don't know I, what I expected. I don't know how it's humanly possible, but okay. It's not. Go ahead. But um <laughs> um Michael Vick is knocked out with a concussion and then you throw in Nick Foles in the in the in the bill in the move, you know, in the mix. So somebody always has to be ready. Your number may always be called and I'm not wishing injury on uh, Mark Sanchez, but if they oh call Tim Tebow's number he better be ready. Not only does Tim Tebow have to be ready, Rex Ryan and that entire offense has to be ready if they're not gonna institute something specific to Tim Tebow's skill set. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And now and now they're starting week 11, Nick Falls. They so have to. First the Redskins. They're saying Mike Vick's um, concussion was uh, significant. Mm. I don't know exactly yeah, what that means, but... They're, they're, they're saying that he may be even out for the season at, at, with that concussion. Ooh. And Falls is going to be, you know... The, the Eagles are pretty set up to do, you know, pretty well as far as bringing in a backup because what Andy Andy Reid does something that a lot of coaches don't do is they actually give kind of equal snaps to backups and starters mm. in, in practice. In practice. Mm. So yeah, that's why Michael Vick was came in behind McNabb and was able to do some things, and and even when Kevin Collins was there, oh that's you know, right, he played well enough to you know he got that got in there and did well enough to get to out get of a there starter and to Arizona and position. you know mm-hmm. that they, they you know him with Foles is a rookie third round pick you really don't exactly. expect him to do anything but. You know, he did well. So, you know, he set them up pretty good, and that's how you're supposed to do it. That's how Colin Kaepernick was so successful yeah. um, with the 49ers. He knows the, the system. Mm-hmm. Uh, he went to Nevada. You know, Alex Smith went to Utah, the West Coast system. Mm-hmm. You know, Jeff Harbaugh went to Stanford. Mm-hmm. He coached that West Coast mm-hmm. offense. So he knows it well. Yeah. So you can be successful. The problem with Timo is that offense does not fit his. At set, all. Like you said. And they're gonna, and, it's, and I'll be shocked if they do any better than they are right now with Sanchez in there. And they're also saying that Andy Reid may end up using the development of Nick Foles as an attempt to save his job. Ooh. Hmm. I, w- I frankly, I, I wouldn't be surprised because Michael Vick. Wait, wait, MK Rob got on me la- <laughs> one time when I said this before. How come Michael Vick doesn't doesn't just learn how to sled? I mean, this clue, I mean, this is not you know it's not the same like situation, this? right? Sorry. Like that pen that Andy just threw across the desk, right? Um, but you know, it's not the same situation clearly. But it's tough when you look at things like that. When you look at a guy like Michael Vick, who has clearly had a you know very tough tough time time over mm-hmm. the past couple of years, but has come back and has really reinv- reinvigorated himself and. Uh, you know, zhuzhed up his career. But then you look at him now, and it's like he he's making the same sort of mistakes. The same thing we're talking about um, Mark Sanchez, Sanchez making. Doing, the same mm-hmm, sort same of things. rookie elementary mistakes is the same thing we're looking at Mike Vick doing the same thing. I don't like that with him. And we can't say that he has distractions. What's he distracted by? Oh. Prison? <laughs> oh. there's, there's no di- distractions, but he does Oh, have my gosh. He, he had does. some pressure because he was given a one hundred million dollar contract after that first year. The second, and yeah, the second of his one. career. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that. a lot of pressure. And he actually actually have a clause where they can pull a lot of that contract if he blows it. So mm-hmm. you know he's trying to save his job, but he's 
really not doing that now. Blows it out. WHCR, 90.3 FM, New York. And you don't be giving no warnings. <laughs> <laughs> She's just talking about... Wait, is that... Uh, blows, blows it how? How would he blow it where they can um, pull out of the contract? Well, they, it's a it's a two year it's a it's, it's a long term deal, mm-hmm. but they're giving him two years to actually you know they can cut him after two years. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. And this is his second year. If they cut him, that the rest of that contract is a, is done. Right, yeah. I did so, hear that they could cut him like I think a couple of days after the Super Bowl. Right, they could. And, right, and, and then he, and he'll be the deal out, would be voided. Be done. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's, that's right. Mm-hmm. All right, so we have a couple of other games. There's uh, tonight. If you guys are interested, nobody's interested. The one and seven Chiefs are <laughs> playing the Steelers. five and three Steelers. But maybe you'll ne- see the Steelers. Some people will be excited. You never know what's gonna happen. Shout out to MD Steeler Girl because you know that's her team. Oh, shout out to my best friend, or one of my best friends, um, from New Mexico, who's a huge Steelers fan. New Mexico? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't often hear people yeah. say, where are you from? I'm from New Mexico. I actually want to hear that a lot. No. I used to you go don't. to New Mexico every, oh, 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 you're making fun of me. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I actually used to go out there every year to visit her. Um, but um, yeah, she's a Steelers fan. I'm a Giants fan when we played last week. But it was the hurricane and stuff. Oh, we haven't even said anything about the hurricane and the snowstorm. We'll talk about that then. Um, the Colts mm-hmm. actually beat up on the Jaguars. They're 27 to 10. Um, we had the Titans. This is another one of those sort of trap games where the Dolphins should have been able to beat the Titans. Instead, the Dolphins end up losing 37-3. to Abysmal effort. It feels like the Giants game, frankly. Uh, we had the Vikings uh, beat the Lions 34-24. to The Patriots actually kind of stuck it out to beat the Bills because that was a very close game. And there was another con- 37 con- to 31. concussion in that game, the running back. Bill's running back, Fred Jackson. Fred Jackson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, We had the Buccaneers, of course, beat the Chargers 34 to 24. The Saints won. Oh, the Saints actually knocked off the one unbeaten team that was left. Um, The Falcons were 8 0 coming into this game. It seemed like you were happy about that. Are you happy about that? I was. You looked happy like that. Tell me how you feel about this because I don't know how I feel about this Falcons team. I'm not sold. Are you sold, MK Rob? I'm not sold. Um, I've never been sold on any Atlanta team. I don't care what sport you pick. Um, yeah, Being that he's from Atlanta. The Hawks, you just pick any team. The problem I have with Atlanta is, um, I mean, they proved it yesterday. When they're down, when Matt Ryan is down, he can't come back. Mm. Drew Brees, they had him, you know, down by at least a couple of scores. Yeah. And they tried to come back, but they can can never finish it. And the Saints know that. They're division rivals. So, you know, it's a, t- it's a situation for them where, yeah, they start off pretty good, and they have a lot of chemistry. They drafted a lot of these guys. But I just don't see that uh, enough, uh, you know, experience, enough playoff experience, and enough um, go get them, I guess. You yeah. want enough swagger, if yeah. you want to call it that, too, to yeah. just go out there and just, you know, beat up on people, kind of like how the Ravens do and the, you know, a lot of those other teams do. I just don't see it. I was happy that they lost. I can't stand either team. But I'm happy that they finally lost because anybody that knows football knows that Atlanta is not the best team. I don't care if they Thank win 12 you. Over, they're still not the best oh. team in the NFL. Thank you. And that's what I was saying, too, when people say name your top five teams. People are putting the Falcons in there number just because of their spot. record. Mm-hmm. Even if mm-hmm. even if it's not number one, even if it's number five, they're putting them, them in there because of their record. And I think that's not mm-hmm. necessarily uh, – that's fair, clearly not, fair, not right? a good judge because we ha- also have some teams that are actually pretty good but are four and five right now because of some really close losses and some re- very, you know, decisive games. Mm-hmm. It's Exactly. It's not necessarily fair. We had the Ravens, though, also put up 55 points on – the, the Raiders. Raiders. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jeez. And the knock on them, too, has been, where's your offense, where's your offense, where's your offense? And they've been saying, where's your offense? Joe Flacco. There he goes. But Joe Flacco, he actually threw for 341 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah. It's, a, it's about he's time. He's back. To I, I don't know if he's back. A little bit. I mean, I'm... I'm he's a... He, he, he's... They're competitors, awakened. that Ravens team. I always it's love Ray that Lewis. defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ray Lewis is back. Ray Lewis was back for that game, and he got in the middle of that huddle and, you know, said his prayers. And yeah. <laughs> and, you know, they put up 55. So, yeah. it's Ray. As yeah. soon as Ray gets in there, the emotional leader, you know, he's not playing. Ray gets in there, yeah. and he preaches, and he has his sermon going on, yeah. and his Bible, and it's, it's a done deal. That's, he, my, that's my uncle Ray. He is going to be a preacher, right? When he retires oh, yeah. after the yeah. murder? And a, Allegedly. <laughs> and a motivational speaker. 
Not after he killed somebody, though. Oh, my God. Uh, Allegedly. Allegedly. Oh, no. I don't believe it. Anyway. Anyway, because I didn't say that because Ray Lewis is a great man, and I love him so much to death. What? Wait, not to death. Oh, I'm looking around (laughs) all suspect. Anyway. No pun intended. (laughs) No, exactly. Uh, We have the Denver Broncos. Shout out to Peyton Manning, who is actually um, surprising, I think, a lot of people uh, with his play these days. I'm not surprised. You surprised? Well, I'm surprised that um, he's bounced back quickly from... As many as long as he's he's been out, as many neck surgeries as he's had. Frankly, I'd be scared, and I didn't want him. You, we've said this on the sh- well, I've said this on the show before. I didn't want him playing football ever again. Not gonna happen. Just for his health. But apparently, the doctors know. Well, apparently, no. Clearly, the doctors know more than I do, and he knows himself better than we do. Mm-hmm. And he's he's playing well. He's taking a couple of big hits, but he's um, seemed to bounce back. And uh, the Broncos beat the Panthers yesterday, thirty six to fourteen. And talk about somebody with a sophomore slump. Ooh. Cam Newton. Well, I mean, I, this is a couple of weeks ago though, so this is maybe taking a little back. But um, Cam Newton's uh, been scrutinized quite a bit too. The Panthers being two and seven. Um, Everyone looked at his his uh, rookie year and expected, okay, well, you know, he played well, but they didn't have the wins necessarily. They expect him to do better this Sophomore year. Sophomore year, he's going to have mm-hmm. the same numbers, but these numbers are actually going to translate into wins, and that has yet to happen. Warning. WHCR, <laughs> 90.3 FM, New York. Sorry, guys. I have to put that warning in there. <laughs> but, but you know what? What I, don't, what, I don't, what I love to hear about that with Cam is, and I know what's what, what problem with Cam, but nobody says anything about Sam Bradford and his sophomore slump. That's but true. But they bring Cam Newton up. They're both high in trophy winners. They're both, yeah. one, you know, number one pick overall, but they don't bring up Sam Bradford. They bring up Cam Newton. But Cam, <laughs> people have figured Cam out. People have figured out what he does. It's just like how the Ravens pretty much solved the Wildcat offense mm. when the Dolphins came out with it. Yeah, that's when Sperano was out there. Though. Hi, Sperano. That's when Tony Sperano was out there. Everyone was all excited. Remember when he had uh, Pat White and them and Ricky Williams? Yeah, they were doing the most. That was so exciting back then. And now it's just not even happening over here. Hey, where is Sperano? (laughs) He he don't know. (laughs) Where is Sperano? I haven't seen him in a while. Okay, listen, we have to Mm -hmm. try since we have you on the line, we have to transition quickly. The Texans actually played the Bears last night, the 7-1 team versus another 7-1 team. The Texans actually went to Chicago in terrible rainy weather, uh, knocked out Jay Cutler uh, with a concussion. A and lot then of something people hope for. And then beat the Bears in a defensive, you know, one of those defensive uh, games, 13-6. Uh, to six. Um, Okay, but let's transition over because there's a lot that we need to talk about. What's happening in L.A.? Did you guys hear? The Lakers have hired a new head coach. You've probably heard all the buzz. And Phil Jackson is stunned that it was not him. Yes, exactly. (laughs) He's stunned. He's stunned. What happened? What happened? But didn't he have like a little sour relationship going on with Jerry Buss? So I wasn't surprised that. Not Jerry. Jim. Jim. Jim Jim Buss. Jerry, Jake. John, <laughs> Peter, Paul, Mike, Steve, yeah. I no, wasn't, I was wasn't really sun. surprised. So with the little sourness going on, you should have hired Brian Shaw if you really asked me. But but you know that I'm, okay. I'm still salty about that. I think everyone thinks Brian, everyone, okay, clearly Brian Shaw was the next in line since he was sitting next to, remember how um, Avery Johnson was um, sitting right next to, um, what's his face? Somebody help me. Me? On the back, oh, who was the head coach? Okay, it doesn't matter. Whatever. But everyone expected that Brian Shaw was going to be Mike the next. No, no, no. When um, Avery Johnson was on the bench, uh, he was sitting next to head coach. It wasn't Rudy hey. Tomjanovich. I can't think of the name. Head coach of what team? Uh, I'm, my, my mind is seeing it, but my face can't make it. It's fine. <laughs> um, but, okay, so... Um, we expected Brian Shaw, especially since he was a former Laker, to actually be the next head coach. They hired Mike um, Brown. Brown instead. Fine. Mm-hmm. Let him go a couple of games in the season. Let him go without even having a replacement. Picked up the interim head coach and then That's spent the past couple of days disrespecting all of us, thinking that it, Phil it was Jackson, that Kobe look. Did you not see how Kobe looked? Oh yeah, no, it was it was Kobe. Well, Kobe wasn't. Kobe wasn't <laughs> rocking with Mike Brown from jump. Everybody yeah. knew that. And you could see the way he disrespected him on the sidelines. This is not the first. Even that stare, Even in the beginning. That stare wasn't the first time that we've seen that from him. So, mm-hmm. okay, so the question was, oh, who are the Lakers going to hire as their new head coach? Oh, Phil Jackson. He'll come back. Frankly, when this first came out, I didn't think Phil Jackson would come back to coaching because he's old, he doesn't want to travel, and he sits on that high chair. And he has like a 20-something-year-old girlfriend that he wants he to sh- be at home with. Not t- I mean, wife. 25. 
No, no, Jeannie Buss isn't that young. No, I'm not. Whoa, whoa. Jeannie Buss and Phil Jackson? What? Are you starting something right here? No, No. that's the thing. (laughs) I'm serious. Oh, you're joking. (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Okay. So um, so everyone thought he was going to come back. At first I didn't. But then, you know, the more I listened to people talking about it, I was like, okay, well, maybe he'll come back. I know he had some stipulations. Mm-hmm. Allegedly had stipulations because now they're saying all of those were factual or, or factual. not factual. Um, that he didn't want to go to certain uh, shoot arounds. He didn't want to tra- necessarily travel as much with the team. He wanted to be able to hire his successor. Um, just a whole bunch of things. Uh, and it turns out overnight... They actually ended up hiring Mike D'Antoni. Yes, that's right. Mike D'Antoni, former Knicks head coach. Mike D'Antoni is now the head coach for the Los Angeles Lakers. This should be interesting. Yeah, he signed a three-year deal, uh, $12 million. Uh, The fourth year is actually an option for the club, uh, Mm -hmm. or for the Lakers, I should say. um, For For Kobe. No, for Kobe. Well, that's if he's still there. And he said he's excited to have him. You know, there's a, a link between the two. Kobe's dad used to play in Italy. Kobe used to live in Italy. Mm-hmm. Um, D'Antoni used to play out there as well. And he's so from there's Italy. Uh-huh. Exactly. So there's a lot of uh, intermingling there. But I'm not sure exactly how he'll feel in that sort of run-and-gun offense that D'Antoni has considering Kobe's age and his health. What do you think, MK, Rob? Uh, I think this was a huge fail by the Lakers. Um, I, I just don't believe in, you know, the Knicks weren't successful with him. Why do you hire him for arguably the best basketball program there is in the world in the Lakers? Um, he has an all-star team, basically, which I don't think I could go one and five or one and four with that team. Uh, Mike Brown was just ridiculous, but I don't think Dan Coney <laughs> um, was, is, is, I don't think he's fit for that job. I think it was a fail. I think uh, Brian Shaw should have been hired. Yeah. Um, but he's I in uh, Indi- Indiana now, right? And he's an assistant there, right? Yeah, he's, right. I think he's an assistant coach there. Mm-hmm. So you'd have to p- uh, probably pay to get him or give us something to get him. Pay him big time. And exactly. do you think he would even want to come back? Because I remember when they dropped him, he said he didn't even know. Well, when they hired Mike Brown, he said he didn't even know that. He, there was Nobody a, knew they were hiring Mike, Mike Brown. Brown. Even Kobe he was said, surprised they hired Mike he Brown. He said he got a call from somebody who was like, I'm watching ESPN. Did you know? That's dirty. And that's the reason why no one likes this new bus. The old bus, fine. Mm-hmm. This new bus, nobody's rocking with him. Kobe wasn't rocking with him. Mike Brown wasn't rocking with him. And apparently they have. there's an issue, like you said, Annie, earlier between him and um, Phil Jackson. Okay, since we're talking Lakers, uh, maybe next week we'll have to get more into this and see. Oh, Mike D'Antoni actually just had knee surgery, so th- apparently he should be in L.A. in the next week or so. Um, but since we're talking about L.A., let's shout out to Andrew Bynum. Who the Lakers traded to the 76ers. Who the 76ers acquired, and um, they're saying he should be out for about five more, at least five more weeks. He'll be back in like, uh, January due or something, to, they're saying, right? Yeah, due to knee complications. As usual. Uh, this is nothing new. We've been seeing this with Andrew Bynum and his knee. Yeah, his knee has been a problem for forever. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. but um, it doesn't seem to be getting better. You know, some, sometimes you guys have ankle issues, is but they get like better. A, um, this doesn't seem a liability. I don't know what he, he is. Is he, is he is he becoming like Greg Oden? <gasps> I don't know. I'm just asking. Uh, no, no. Yeah, Greg he, Oden is made no. out of glass. Glass. Yeah, Greg Oden is no. He's just. It's like he's irrelevant, really. I mean, at least Andrew Bynum is irrelevant. At least you can keep him on the roster. Greg mm-hmm. Oden is just ridiculous. Yeah. You know who he might be more? Clo- he might be closely related to Yao Ming, because Yao Ming in, later in his career was oft injured. Right. Um, right. And could stay on the court for a little bit, but then mm-hmm. he'd come out with another broken foot. It's like, you broke your foot again? And then he broke his foot, and he's like, damn, again? Um, but right. anyway, with all that said, oh, look, you stayed with us for like half an hour, which is awesome. Any games wow, tonight? Did, Anything? I? Oh, wow. we ha- only one exciting game, which is tonight at 7 p.m. OKC versus the Grizzlies. Oh, my gosh, my two two loves of my life are playing. Rudy Gay you- and... Oh, um, and, and Russell Westbrook. And today's Russell Westbrook's birthday, guys. I wish you guys could see her hand oh. motions and how big her <laughs> eyes got. Oh, she I is. Will see the hand motions and I will be speaking with her after the show. Today is Russell Westbrook's Russell birthday, Russell November 12th. He was born. Oh, we gotta go. Nope, 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 nope. Up up next is Inside Housing. W-H-C-R, again, no warning. FM, um, New York. MK Rob, thanks so much for hanging out with us, man. We'll see you soon. All right.
All right, bye. bye. All, right. All right, like I said, up, ne- up next oh. is Inside Housing with Nelly has to be. We got to go. We'll see you guys next week, Monday at 5 p.m. As usual, we'll talk more sports and we'll have more fun and tons of laughs. And you guys can call in. We can have so much fun. Okay, bye. Love you. Bye. Adios. WHCR 90.3 FM, New York. I'm just kidding. My ears were not sweating. <laughs> Are you a singer, a musician, or a producer? Are you looking to record a demo, a song, or an entire album? This is Angela Harden, General Manager of WHCR 90.3 FM, and I'm excited to tell you that you no longer have to travel all the way downtown to record your project. WHCR offers a state-of-the-art recording studio with an experienced engineer. Our studio is affordably priced and conveniently located in the heart of Harlem, right here on the campus of City College. For rates and information, please call 212-650-7147. That's 212-650-7147. Harlem has its own radio station and its own... WHCR 90.3 FM, New York. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to Inside Housing. 
This is our weekly program of news analysis and talk back on housing, real estate, and public policy from a local, state, wide, national, and yes, even an international perspective. I'm your host and producer, Nellie Hester Bailey, along with board operator Hyja Worley. We're broadcasting from the studios of WHCR Radio 90.3 FM on your dial, the voice of Harlem Radio. Welcome all of our listeners to the program. Well, this week we continue our special coverage on the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy um, here in New York City. And in particular, we're going to talk about the outer borough neighborhoods and the boroughs devastated by Hurricane Sandy. That's Red Hook in Brooklyn, Far Rockaway in Queens, and what's happening in Staten Island. But first, uh, we want to give you a report on the economic damages of Hurricane Sandy. Governor Andrew Cuomo announced the state will ask Congress for at least $30 billion in federal disaster aid. 